We thank God. We praise God for giving us another opportunity to come to uh, in his presence and to meditate the word as we have meditated up to seven chapter. Now we are going to meditate the eighth chapter of uh, Revelation. As we have seen from six chapter, seven chapter, and the multiple seals were opened. And as the seals were opened, there were many incidents were taking place on earth. That gives us an idea that all the things that are happening, happening on earth as a spiritual connection. They were originated. They were originated in heavens. We can see that. We can understand that. And as we see, as we we have meditated in the seventh chapter that uh, uh, six seals were broke open by Jesus Christ, the slain lamb. And Jesus Christ has achieved or obtained the eligibility to break open these seals by his uh, redemptive, redemption work or sacrificial work or the work of atonement that he has done to, to redeem the entire mankind. As we see, and then we have moved uh, into chapter 8, the first verse we see, it's an interesting verse. And when he broke the seventh seal, yeah. there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. There was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. When the seventh seal, when Jesus is opening, and uh, as we see in the previous chapters that uh, day and night, the angels, the cherubims and the seraphims, they were praising God, holy, holy, holy. They were praising him day and night. And, uh, but everything was stopped. God was not praised. God was not worshipped. He was not receiving the worship in this half an hour. And the entire heaven became half an hour. How do we understand this? It could be illustrated or it could be symbolically said like a, a silence before a, some great events are going to happen. Why the entire heaven was silent? That also gives us a uh, little glimpse that how much importance that God is giving to a mankind, to a human, the one who is created in his image. He stopped the worship, he stopped the praise, he stopped all the business, or can say all the activities in the heaven. Everything came at, at, at a Pause or at star, can say. And uh, John was mentioning that, Apostle John was mentioning that for about an half an hour. We truly do not know whether it is the half an hour time of humans' time or the time of God. Because this also gives us a, a, an understanding that. How much God loves humans. As he is planning to do some great events on earth, which are not really pleasing to God. But he had to do in order to save people eternally. And uh, we can see from when Jesus Christ has opened the seventh seal and uh, second verse we can uh, see, and I saw the seven angels who stood before God and seven trumpets were given to them. Seven angels. While the seals were broke, uh, broke open, we could, we could see angels were very much active and they're doing an activity. They're participating in one or the other thing. They're participating in one or the other thing. As we can see, there are seven angels now, and each one was given a trumpet. 
even when the previously we can see when the seals were broke open one angel was calling then another heavenly being was coming either on a horse for the first four seals they were coming on on horse and then fifth seal sixth seal so here angels were also taking part in the god's guidance and god's work that is going to happen on earth and a uh, very interesting thing we can see uh, seven trumpets were given to them we also have meditated the significance of trumpets even in the old testament we can see the trumpet is something is given to send a message either to get ready for something for a war kind of an a warning or even at the end of the war also the trumpets were blown the trumpets are used because they they were supposed to carry out the message or the the sound for a very long distances hallelujah for very long distances because uh, rather than uh, a, a person's a voice or anything the trumpet will take the the voice to a very far distances and here the seven trumpets they indicate the something seven resembles a perfect number and the trumpets here are resembling that uh, a warning sign something is going to happen or kind of uh, for now to alert people mankind on earth this were given and we can see verse 3 and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer here very interesting thing is we've been observing the objects that were present in the heaven the objects that were present in the throne room in the heaven we saw the doors getting open we saw thrones we saw crowns we saw altar we saw seven lampstands and there was an altar even in the revelation chapter 5 also there is a kind of a golden censer was mentioned even in the uh, Is it was mentioned in the chapter 5, verse 8. I will read it for you. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each of them having a harp and a golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. There we have meditated that. God has given so much importance to the prayers of a man. Often, even when Jesus Christ was on earth, he has given so many promises about the prayers. And he said that if you do not doubt in the heart and believe whatever that you have asked in prayer, that you will receive, that you, will, you shall receive it. And Jesus Christ also said that Whatever that you will you you will ask in the name of my father, my father will grant you because for the glory of his name's sake. Jesus Christ has promised many things about the prayers, and even in the epistle of James, also we can see the prayer of a righteous man is will be so powerful. And uh, here, this gives us the, a great assurance of the prayers, the gravity of uh, prayers of the saints. And we also have meditated that the prayers were kept in a golden censer. That means how precious they look in the sight of the Lord. 
even the psalmist writes that you are measuring my uh, tears in a bowl, he said. And also he said, you are writing all my tears in a book. And uh, even in the Acts, book of Acts, we can see in the case of Cornelius, the angel of God has come to Cornelius and said, Cornelius, your prayers have reached to God as a remembrance. As a remembrance. That means though they have prayed, the, the prayers were getting accumulated and they were preserved in the presence of God. We can see the power of the prayer. The power of the prayer of the saints. And they were given so much importance in the sight of Lord. They were preserved in the golden censer and they were carried by the angels of the Lord. Even in the eighth chapter also we can see when Jesus Christ was about to open the scroll, there also these prayers were brought into the picture. Apostle John was looking at these angels. They were having harp. Their angels were having harp. Here, the angels were having trumpets. They were having harp and uh, they were to, they were praising the slain lamb. And uh, the angels were also carrying the golden censer which were having the prayers of the saints. And here also we can see and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and much incense was given to him that he might offer it with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne. Here the one interesting thing, here the altar is, a, is not a bronze altar, like uh, how it was mentioned to Moses. To the Moses, it was said that uh, you do according to the, according to, accordingly, what was shown to you on the mountain. And also, we can see uh, similar words in uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, we can uh, see it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, it says that who serve as the representation and shadow of heavenly things. So Moses was he so Moses was warned by God when he was about to make the tabernacle. He said, see that you make everything according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. And the, the tabernacle that Moses was built was a replica of the things that were existing in the heavenlies. We can see that. We can see the altar. Moses was asked to build a bronze altar. And the bronze also symbolically represents of sacrifice. It represents of the sacrifice. Jesus Christ has the feet, a purified bronze. It was mentioned in the Revelation chapter 1. His feet were like a brandon. It was like pure bronze. And uh, that also uh, gives a symbolic interpretation that uh, the feet represents a lifestyle. Feet represents walk of life. Then the feet, when it is like pure bronze, the walk of life, which is sacrificial, at the same time, the pure bronze represents there is no infirmity. That means the pure, blameless 
and sinless life that he has led. But here we see a golden altar. Now here, there, that means there's no sacrifice on in heaven. The sacrifice was on earth. That's why it was given, uh, Moses was asked to build an altar with a bronze covering. And uh, there, they used to offer all the animals and the, all the sacrifices. The, the, that was representing the sacrificial altar or where the sacrifice is going to be done. and But in heaven, it's a golden altar. So we can observe the difference in both the altars. The gold always represents like a kind of a worship or kind of a, a, a precious thing and for a celebration too. And uh, here on the altar, we can see the angel was standing at the altar having a golden censer. Here also, the angel is having a golden censer. And the, uh, the golden censer, the prayers were, prayers of the saints were there in the golden censer. And he was given so much incense, incense to add to that. What are these incense that they can make a pleasing aroma to the Lord? The priest was given incense to offer along with the sacrifices that uh, that it will come the smoke the or the uh, fragrance will raise up so that it can be a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Here also they were given a incense to add to these uh, so that it can be a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But here the prayers, we can see the prayers are different. In the chapter 5, in the golden sense of the prayers of the saints, maybe it was about the revelation of the end times because the scroll, the, the scroll that Jesus Christ was about to open that is going to reveal the end times, that is going to reveal the plan of God for the mankind, that is going to reveal the chronological order of the things or the events that are going to take place on earth. It's a, the complete revelation of God and the sequential in a chronological or sequential way we can see. How can we say that whether it is in a sequential way? Because they are opened one by one. And uh, we can understand that the entire book of Revelation is not uh, is not mentioning the events in a chronological order. But yet, we can see some parts of the book where we have uh, the events are happening in a chronological order. Here, these prayers can say they are at the altar. And uh, we also have seen uh, in another uh, previous chapter, that they were saints at the altar, they were praying to the Lord. We can see chapter 6 and the verse 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. People who were in the fifth seal, uh, we have meditated that the fifth seal, there will be a great tribulation. A great tribulation is going to come upon the earth. And also, in that great tribulation, many, many men of God or the saints will be martyred. And uh, we can see their souls at the altar and uh, crying to the Lord that how long that you will not avenge for our blood, my Lord. These souls were crying to the Lord that how long, my Lord, that you will take to avenge. Here also, we can see symbolically they were they, the prayers were remembered at the altar and uh, uh, and there was an answer also. And we can see. That means these prayers would, could be the of the prayers of the saints who went through the great sufferings and the tribulation and the trials. It should. It may not be necessarily that all the prayers are from the 
sales were marked when the fifth sale was broke open. It could be from the beginning because all the sales from the beginning who have suffered for Christ, who have cried out to the Lord, who have really sacrificed their lives, their prayers are remembered in the presence of God. And along with that, incenses, the incenses also, we can understand that something, a kind of a ministry that was given to the angels in order to support the saints. We can see in the Matthew chapter 4, after the great feast, Jesus was tired and what where the angels have come and supported him and they have ministered him. That means they have actually uh, act, they, they have added something to him so that he could able to withstand to the suffering. Even in the garden of uh, Gethsemane, when Jesus Christ was uh, in a great distress, and he was in a great distress and uh, the scripture says an angel appeared to him and uh, strengthened him. We can also understand that uh, the ministry, the angelic ministry was uh, given to the saints where uh, when they were about to face the great suffering or great uh, uh, test or trial for the Lord. We can also see even in the Old Testament when Elijah, prophet Elijah was almost uh, became hopeless and wanted to die and uh, he has lost hope on his life, then we can see the angelic ministry and angel has appeared to him and strengthened him. So this is these incenses we can symbolically or can be interpreted as the angelic ministry that was given to these saints when they were praying for the Lord. They were praying uh, to the Lord. And uh, and we see the verse 4 and the smoke, uh, Revelation chapter 8, verse 4, and the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up out to the angel of the angel's hand to the presence of God. Here is an interesting thing. These all the angels and Apostle John is actually looking uh, straight into the, uh, the throne room. He's, uh, he's, he's having the vision of the visions of the throne room. And uh, all the angels were there. There was the altar and everything was there. But uh, when they have offered this uh, incense and the prayers like that, the smoke went up. It's like they're already in the heaven, but the smoke went up to the God. This also gives us a kind of a uh, understanding that even in the heaven, when everybody was around, when all the angels are around, but still the Lord is uh, is not at the same level where they are. He's always at the, you can say he's always at up little uh, greater heights than everybody around. Maybe that also gives us uh, an understanding of Isaiah 14, where there's a, you know, there's a mention about the Saturn, what the great uh, rebellious thought that Saturn had is to exalt his throne above the throne of Lord. That means it's like everybody is there we can see it, it's kind of a different dimension maybe. Maybe it's kind of a different dimension because wherever people are there, whether the angels, uh, everybody is around, but uh, he's not at the same realm of where other people are there. And also it says like it is not uh, just a very small, uh, little up or little altitude. The smoke went up. That means the smoke has to for the smoke has to go 
there should be a uh, clear and uh, good uh, good difference in the altitude we can say so that also gives an understanding that uh, the lord and the throne of the lord even in the throne room is is above all the thrones and uh, it's a kind of a different dimension maybe we can try to understand about the throne room and uh, we see verse 5 and the, and the angel, angel, yeah, please. And the angel took the censer and he filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Hallelujah. We can, we can see the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire. And uh, the fire, the and uh, through that, and uh, through that onto the earth. That means we can also symbolically understand this is the answer to the prayers of the saints. This is the answer that is coming onto the earth for the prayers of the saints. What was the prayers of the saints we have observed in the chapter six? Can you know how long will you? Will you take to avenge for our blood, my Lord? Even in the Genesis, God said that the blood of Abel is crying to me for the vengeance. And even if you see the blood of the saints, are they are crying to the Lord so that God can avenge on behalf of them. But when they were on earth, they cannot pray for the, they cannot uh, uh, go against to the law of the Lord, or they cannot go against the inspiration of the Lord. We can see that in the book of uh, Acts, chapter 6, where when the Stephen was killed, when he was martyred, he prayed and uh, he, he prayed for God to forgive them. But uh, we can also see that their blood is actually praying to the Lord for avenging and uh, that that is the answer we can see that could be the answer of their prayers here and also we can see an interesting thing when these fire that was taken from the altar and there were thunders voices flashes lightning of... flashes and an earthquake and we can also see similar thing from uh, chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. And from the throne proceed flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. Ah. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And uh, here, and from the throne came lightning flashes and thunderings and voices from the lamp uh, from the throne of the lord these thunders lightnings and the voices they were coming and they, when they angel have thrown these fires the same thing that was happening on earth people could able to see that means we can also interpret symbolically the very presence the mighty presence of God coming upon the earth, coming on the earth, even at, on the Mount Sinai, when the Lord has come, we could be able to see. Can we read that scripture? Uh, Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse 19, verse 18, 19. The Lord visits Sinai. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire 
and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace mm. and the whole mountain quaked violently mm. when the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder moses spoke and god answered him with thunder amen we can see the thunders were also in the old testament even in the case of uh, elijah the thun thunders were representing when god is going to speak to them or kind of an atmosphere that was uh, happening in a supernatural way when god is uh, uh, has come down or descended to speak to the people or to do something or to convey something we can see that and why thunders and why lightnings and uh, why an earthquake we can see god even even the previous chapters we have seen that uh, the prophetic uh, prophetically jesus said i will shake the earth and heavens one more time and in hebrews book of hebrews we have seen the scripture that uh, i will i'm going to shake the heavens and earth one more time even uh, we could able to see earthquake also is a symbolic representation of a might uh, descending of the presence of god mightily even in the book of acts when the saints have come together when they have prayed the the place was shaken the scripture in the scripture it was mentioned that the place was shaken and immediately they were filled with the boldness there that was the answer for the prayers of those saints now here this is the answer for the prayers of the saints who have suffered for the lord and who have actually uh, became martyrs for the lord and the thunders and lightnings we can also see that the people can see these things happening in the sky bible says the scripture says there will be many things will happen in the heavens that people will look at and they will lose their courage they will lose their courage they will become timid they will become afraid for these things uh, for the things that are happening in the heavens in the book of acts when the earthquake when the earthquake has come they were filled with the courage and uh, but in the isaiah chapter 2 and uh, in the joel chapter 2 when the heavenly the powers of the heavens were shaken people will be filled with the fear and that's what we can see and uh, now verse 6 chapter 8 verse 6 and the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them to blow them here is also one interesting thing up to six seals he just broke one seal after another but when god is going to break open the seven seal now the seven seal is going to be fulfilled it was open but the events that are going to happen under seven seal are going to be fulfilled in seven folds why it is why why god wants to do in seven folds this also gives us an another symbolic uh, uh explanation or symbolic uh, uh remembrance of uh, jericho when israelites have come to conquer canaan the jericho was the first city first fortress or the stronghold that they have they had to win over they have to fight against and god has said six days you make rounds around the city six days once in a uh, one one round per day but on the seventh day make seven rounds that also can say like a model of god that six days he has given time for the people of jericho and seventh day is given a much longer time like seven times every time the israelites were 
making a round around the, the Jericho, it was a clear sign to the people of Jericho that uh, they are they are going to be attacked and they are going to be completely taken over. Because the scripture says, with the fear of Israelites, the Jericho was shut tightly. It was closed tightly. And uh, now symbolically or spiritually, we can say the Jericho, the stronghold of the world, six seals God has broke open and things have happened. And seven times now, seven under seven seal, seven folds revelation or seven folds events that Jesus Christ is going to do. The seven trumpets. That also gives us a glimpse of the a merciful heart of God. People went through the great tribulation under six seal. The heavenly force, heavenly forces were shaken. They have seen many uh, stars falling down. Can be meteoroids or asteroids falling down. But God is not quick to wind up everything. But he is giving time after time, time after time. Here, seven trumpets. We can see in the verse 7 how what is going to happen when the first angel blew the first trumpet. And the first sounded, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown into the thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass were was brown brown burned up. Ah, there were hailstones when the first trumpet was blown. There were hailstones. Usually, the hailstones are uh, they they form when there was a, a sudden condensation in the clouds and the big, big hailstones that are falling from the heaven, they are going to make people, uh, they're going to kill people. We can see the same hailstones, uh, God judged the gods of Egypt. God said to Moses, I'm going to judge the gods of Egypt. And uh, there were 10 plagues in Exodus chapter 9, verse 22 to 26. We can read uh, in the country of Egypt, God has tested them or he has uh, uh, brought hailstones upon Egyptians. Now the was... Lord said to Moses, mm. Stretch out your hand toward the sky mm. that hail may fall on all the land of Egypt, ah. on man and on beast and on every plant of the field mm. throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched out his staff toward mm. the sky mm. and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire ran down to the earth and the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Fire ran down to the earth. The hailstones mixed with fire and uh, uh, we, even if you see scientifically there was a sudden condensation there was going to be a, a great thunderstorm or thunder thunderbolts uh, of the lakhs and lakhs of voltage of uh, uh, static electricity they are going to fall here in the nation of Egypt God has tested them God has punished them by the hailstones. But even that time, God did not punish the humans or God did not touch the humans, but uh, he touched the animals and the uh, trees or anything that is in the field. Even in the last days, that was happened just in the Egypt, but here and on the entire uh, on the entire earth, the, it is going to have hailstones coming from heaven and they are going to destroy the trees, one third of the trees. And it says that the blood, fire mingled with blood. 
where where else it was mentioned can we turn our books to book of joel book, book of joel chapter 2 verse 30 Chapter 2, verse 30. And I will display wonders in the sky and display on the earth. Display wonders in the sky. And on the earth. And on earth. Blood, fire, and columns blood, of smoke. Fire. And columns of smoke. And smoke. And that's what actually through the prophet of uh, Joel, God has mentioned about the wrath of the day of the Lord. It was said, we also have meditated for that time. Uh, day of the Lord is different from the great tribulation. The great tribulation under fifth seal where there is a great persecution on earth is different from the great day of the Lord. We can also observe that. And uh, here God is only destroying the grass, the trees and uh, one third of the trees are uh, burned down. What does it mean? It means God actually, now the animals will not have sufficient food and uh, people will not have sufficient food and the uh, entire creation will not have sufficient food. Why God is allowing this? The end of the day, we can see God wants humans to repent for their sins. Even at that time, they should uh, come forward, they should bow down before the Lord and repent of their iniquities and the sins. And uh, we can, let's move on to verse 8. And, and, the, this, mm. and the second angel sounded mm -hmm. and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. And then, okay. and then verse and the 9 also, and a third and part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life, died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. A third of the ships were destroyed. And here also, when the second angel had blown the trumpet, a great hill like something, which is burning out of fire, has uh, entered into the uh, earthly atmosphere. From every day, there will be many, many asteroids they are coming towards uh, and they are falling on Earth. But the asteroids and their size was very small. They became small when they have entered into the Earth atmosphere. They'll be burned away. So at, when they have reached the uh, uh, when they have reached the Earth or the ground, it'll become a, a small stone or something like that. And the scientists also. Uh, we do not know this for sure, but the science says that the pre, uh, to say the dinosaurs and the prehistoric animals, the prehistoric animals like dinosaurs and all those have died because of uh, a great comet. It's not an asteroid, but it can be said like a comet hit the Earth and they were destroyed. There was, though there was no such, uh, any evidence supporting this theory, but from here we can see that there's a big comet at the size of a, a big hill. It's going to hit the earth. And uh, it is not going to hit the earth, but it is going to fell, it is going to fall in the ocean sea. And all the sea creatures and uh, one third of the sea creatures are going to be destroyed. And the ships are going to be destroyed. Ships are representing about the business and the trade business and the transport from one place to another place and uh, doing the transport business and, and all that. And that is going to be destroyed. And uh, even when we see in the uh, about Tyre, about Sidon, about Babylon. God has mentioned that uh, you have done so much business with the world. 
and he said that. And God is going to, it's symbolically we can say that God is going to destroy the business of the world one third. And uh, in the, when the seals were broke open, we have seen there going to be a great economical crisis, but that is that was not destroying the the complete uh, trade or the, or the logistics or any business that was uh, dependent on the uh, sea, because on the sea when it was dependent, so many things that are going to happen when the sea is uh, when the sea is impacted. We can understand that. Uh, even for example, technologically, the all the internet lines, uh, majority of the internet lines were run through the ocean. The optic fiber cables are run through the underground sea. Underground cables are run through in the sea. So we can also anticipate that uh, there's going to be a disaster in the in the in terms of the technological also. The ships represent that. Uh, a great, taking the great volume of the uh, transport from one place to other place, not in nearby places. We have seen from the Daniel chapter 12, in the end days, people, there'll be great travel. People will go to different places and uh, that give, gives them increase of the knowledge. So that also that we can see is going to be destroyed or, or hampered one third of the sea, the sea creatures, everything that is living in the sea creature has the uh, kind of a uh, bio science or bio equilibrium that is going to be uh, hampered, we can understand. And uh, that is when the second angel was blown. And the, when the first trumpet was blown, the trees, grass, it was uh, one third of the one third of them were struck down, destroyed. And uh, when the second trumpet was blown, it was the sea. One third of the sea creatures were destroyed. And when the third angel has blew the trumpet, and the third angels, and the third angel blew the trumpet, and the great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. They were made bitter. And uh, here an interesting thing we can understand. And uh, in the eighth verse, we see something like a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and uh, uh, verse 7 also we can see the first angel when the first angel blew the trumpet the hailstones cast upon the earth it mentioned cast upon the earth but here we can see a great star fell from heaven we certainly do not know whether it is a celestial object or it, it is like a, a fallen angel or a, a heavenly body because it could be the both. It's mentioned that was falling from heaven. This It could be a celestial body or it could be a spiritual uh, a spirit or a heavenly uh, heavenly being we can understand and uh, burning like a lamp and it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon the springs of waters and the name of the star is called warm wood and because it was given a name and uh, it is falling from heaven we can also understand its kind of a a spiritual being that was coming from heaven and also it could be a celestial object because when it is falling on one third of the rivers and how can it be possible 
that something is burning and uh, can uh, can fall on the one third of the reverse because uh, there are rivers in America, there are rivers in Africa, there are rivers in Asia, there are rivers in Australia. So this should cover, if this has to cover all the rivers, one third of the rivers, then uh, maybe in something which will, which is falling, burn, uh, falling from heaven, burning, and also can be like a, it may blast in the, uh, heaven also in blast in the space we can uh, understand that so that uh, it will it will be scattered very far distances it is only an interpretation but uh, because something is coming from heaven and uh, for it to scatter to many places one thing has to be done is like uh, it should be blasted or kind of like a uh, completely bang and that's why the pieces of that is falling in a uh, scattered and falling in many rivers one third of rivers and uh, when it was when it fell in the rivers all the waters have become uh, bitter they have become bitter and uh, because because of that those bitter waters Many one died. third of many, many have died. Many men died from these waters because they were made bitter. If it is, a, if we see in a spiritual way, the rivers also represents the kind of a life of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord, the living, uh, living waters that God has given into each and every mankind. And this wormwood is creating a bitterness in their hearts which was also mentioned in the hebrews chapter 12 verse uh, uh, hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 it says like the bitterness that has a root in their hearts will defile them and they may not have a a chance to repent when uh, Paul when the 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 author was writing about uh, uh, bitterness and uh, not having a chance to repent. See, that no one comes short of the grace of God. No one comes short, short of the grace of the Lord. That no root of bitterness. No root of bitterness springing up. Springing up causes trouble causes trouble and by it many be defiled but by it many will be defiled here also a bitterness was mentioned this bitterness was created within them and because of that many people were defiled and the later verses we also there was also a mention of Esau about Esau it was mentioned that uh, he was not given a chance to repent and uh, then that's the end of the story. And here also, this wormwood, the same wormwood name we can see uh, when Israelites have come, when Israelites have come, up, come out uh, from Egypt, we can see uh, there is a place with Meribah. They were having, yeah. Uh, there also, they have mentioned that they were having bitter waters. Do you remember the uh, reference where uh, they had these uh, bitter waters? Uh, 
I will give the uh, reference. They for the water and they grumbled against they, the uh, they didn't have, have water, but uh, at one place they'll have water, but it was bitter. And uh, because they could not uh, drink that waters, they have grumbled against God and uh, God has told Maybe Moses. Verse seven, 17 verse 7. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of rock at Horeb and uh, you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Okay. And he named the place Mar Marsha and Meribah because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? 17 verse 7, Meribah. Tastes like water. Okay. Okay. There were there were one place where they had these waters with that they were unable to drink. And here also there they were unable to drink and they cried out to the Lord and God sent a, a, a plan so that they can the waters are made uh, tasty and were made normal. Here they have drank these waters and uh, people have died because of them. Mm -hmm. In a spiritual way, we can say it could be a bitterness that um, they had, a, uh, they have lost the opportunity, they've lost the grace, opportunity to repent. In a physical way, we can see that uh, it could be some a comet or a celestial, uh, celestial uh, metal or celestial uh, element that is, that is added in the rivers that made the water's poisonous. That word that that made the water's poisonous. And as soon as they drank, they all have many have died. And when they many have died, again we see at every stage, God is giving humans an opportunity to turn to Him. And uh, can we can uh, can we read verse twelve? And the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and the third of the moon. And a third of the stars were smitten, so that a third of them might be darkened, and the day might not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. And like was the night. And uh, when the fourth angel blew the trumpet, there was one third, one third part of the stars, one third part of the sun. sun and one third part of the moon have become darkened. This also we could able to see in the chapter 6, Revelation chapter 6, uh, 12 and 13. And I looked when he broke the sixth scene, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. Mm. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth mm. as a fig tree casts its unripe figs when shaken with a great wind. Ah. Here in the sixth chapter, verse 12 to 13, there were also heavenly uh, heavenly forces of the stars falling from heaven like a fruits of the fig. When they were ripened, when how they fall on the earth, they were falling. And the second thing we can see, the sun was become black and uh, the moon was become red. Here, the one third of the glow of the sun was not completely struck off. It was made black. Many times we can see uh, in, 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 in the place of uh, uh, solar eclipse, the sun will be made black. Sun is sun was not visible, mm -hmm. and uh, because sun was not uh, giving a complete light, the moon also turning a uh, red, and uh, it, it's kind of a heavenly or some eclipse or kind of an activity we can understand in the chapter six, where the moon looks like a blood red. Now even now. So we often we observe red moons. Red moons every year we observe red moon on a particular time. 
because of the this eclipse, eclipse, uh, solar eclipse or the those events, the moon was looks like a blood. It's a uh, phenomena that was happening on an annual basis. So far, there are many red moons the mankind have seen, but this red moon is not like any of them. That is something very different. And uh, even the solar eclipse, the sun has become completely dark, like a sack, and uh, uh, he was removed, means like a, he lost shining. But whereas here, the sun is there, but uh, when the fourth trumpet was blown, one third of the sun has become dark. That means uh, it has stopped giving light permanently. Permanently. But uh, in the from sixth chapter, we can see after that period, it was again shining normally. But from here, from when this trumpet is blown, after this, the moon and the sun and the stars, they have completely removed or lost their glory or the shining. One third of the stars. In the chapter 6, 12 and 13, select many stars are falling. They could be like asteroids or kind of uh, uh, comets or meteoroids that are falling. Many times we see, uh, especially at the polar poles, North Pole or South Pole, at a time, there's so many objects that are entering into the Earth atmosphere and burning away like a falling stars we can see. But here, one third of the stars, this is their counted, one third of the stars were completely struck off. That means the night is becoming more darker and the day also is becoming more is a, we, we, we may think that it may lose light. No, it, it is not the case because the later when the uh, bowls, the bowls of the wrath were flakes, when the flake, when we see uh, when God has brought the flakes, the temperature in, uh, in the sun is great, in, will increase greatly. Even now, scientists are saying that uh, year on year, the fuel, the helium, which was giving the uh, burning or like a light in the sun is decreasing year on year. And uh, someday it can become completely dark, they are saying. Because thank God that even science and scientists are able to acknowledge that these stars are not going to stand there forever. But their calculation, the time that they are calculating is different from the biblical times. But we can see one third of the uh, light of the sun will be completely darkened. How we can see that? We do not know in one way if the earth, uh, if the sun has lost its shining and it's lost its uh, uh, can say heat, the power to eliminate the heat that is generated from sun, if it is decreased by one third, the all the poles, there are two things will happen. The geography, the uh, geo gravitational forces will differ very uh, greatly because the earth was rotating around sun because of this geo the, uh, the sun and the earth the gra because of the gravitational force. When it is reduced, what will happen? Some scientists are saying that the poles may shift. The south pole may become north and north pole become may south. The poles may shift. And if such, such thing happens, that how it will be? And because the heat is also reduced by one third, we can see that the snow or the, the especially at the pole, poles, uh, polar places, the snow and the ice can increase greatly. The other planets 
like which are far from uh, sun, they're having like ice plants, like Pluto is called like a uh, plant of uh, ice or something, if I remember correctly. That means it has a uh, minus degrees temperature at that place because uh, the sun raises and the heat it is not receiving. That can happen even uh, on Earth. And the moon also has lost its shine. That means the nights can become much darker because one third of the stars were removed and the one third of the sun or moonlight is also removed. How moonlight can be removed, I do not understand because moon is not a self-illuminating uh, object, but uh, maybe it uh, one third of the portion of the moon may fall apart. We do not know. It may it may break open. We do not know because in the in the case of sun, because it is uh, uh, having a self illumination within inside because of the uh, scientifically helium and other gases are burning, so it is giving light. But whereas in the case of moon, it is not giving light by itself. So how can one third of it uh, can be darkened? Maybe uh, it is a uh, one. One third portion of the moon can be struck off, or because one third light of the sun is reduced, that is reflecting one third uh, light of the moon is also reduced. Uh, we do not know it for sure, but we can say that the nights will become much darker than what we have now. And uh, okay. what will happen when the uh, moon? has lost its ability. When moon has lost its ability to shine, what will happen? The tides are dependent on the, the gravitation force from the moon. Especially that's the reason the tides will be more during the night than the days. That means when uh, the, there will be change even the tides in the oceans, it may increase if they increase more and more, then there would be a great devastation at the seashore areas. But if they recede back, then there are also great uh, devastation because already one third of the animal sea creatures were killed in the sea. So the number of uh, sea creatures are very minimum and the sea also can uh, recede back. We do not know, but it will definitely have an impact on the level of tides on the ocean. We can understand that. And uh, verse 13. And I looked, and I heard an eagle flying in mid heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 those who dwell on the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Hallelujah. Here, an interesting thing, though it was mentioned as an uh, angel flying through the middle of heaven and uh, crying out. Even we can understand the heart of the Lord. Now, there is a voice. The trumpets were gone and uh, now is a voice before the last three trumpets are going to uh, blow. God sent an angel to alert the mankind. And it is crying, oh, ooh, ooh. That means, alas, like, it's like a curse. It's showing sympathy. It's showing that uh, how great uh, fatal things that are going to come on people of the people on earth. And uh, everybody might have listened the voice of the angel here. And then, but uh, God is going to uh, open three more trumpets. He is going to re reveal events under three more trumpets, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. But the fifth and sixth, seventh will be worse than that. That also gives that from the seals, the intensity the intensity of the things that are going to happen, that are happening on earth is steadily increasing from first seal, 
second seal, fifth seal, sixth seal, like the heavenly bodies are shaken. And from there, the trumpets steadily, the intensity is increasing and it is going to be increased much more. We can see that in the coming uh, weeks. But whereas we can see chapter 8 gives us few things, the sevenfold activity of God before he is going to completely wind this creation and uh, start a, a brand new creation. And also we have seen up to six seals, he opened it straightly, but under seven seal, he has given sevenfold events that are happening under there. It also gives a perfect, seven represents number of perfection. That also gives, tells us the perfect grace of the Lord for people to repent and turn to him. And we see many people are died because of having these uh, bitter waters. Bitter waters. Either they could be physically died or spiritually completely uh, irreplaceable state that they have gone to. We do not know. And the angel that fell from heaven, the uh, star that fell from heaven, can, uh, we can interpret that. Uh, that could be a spiritually, that could be a fallen angel or a heavenly bodies or physically, that could be a great star that they have blasted or can they burst in the space so that it will be scattered to many rivers. And But however, we can understand that uh, all these things are not uh, uh, happy things. God is blowing some trumpets. And uh, many times uh, in the uh, social media or something, uh, sometimes people predict that uh, the, we are uh, at the trumpets level uh, already the trumpets are going to blow. Uh, I certainly do not uh, think so because uh, when we see the fourth seal, the great third seal, the generation people raising against another people and uh, lakhs and lakhs of people are getting killed. That those things, events have not happened yet. And uh, we also see under third seal, a great economical crisis and famine that also hasn't happened. Maybe some places there was a famine, but uh, we do not, it is, still I think uh, it is not up to the mark where every single individual is uh, uh, will have pain because of it. And also fifth seal, a great persecution. Christians and the believers are being persecuted across the world. But uh, the great persecution happening at the same time that many, many, many thousands and lakhs of people are killed because the name of the Lord is, I think it's not yet happened. And especially sixth seal where the heavenly bodies are shaken and uh, many stars falling on the earth like uh, trees of uh, fruits, fig fruits from falling from the fig tree that also have not happened. So uh, I personally uh, think that the blowing the trumpets hasn't yet come, but maybe God will make it happen soon as so many things are happening in the world, including the Israel war. Israel is warring with uh, the neighboring countries and uh, many people are uh, disowning Israel, especially the West, uh, disowning Israel, UK, there are Ireland, US, and those nations, there are the hesitations to leave Israel, not to support Israel. So the scripture also tells us that uh, there will be, there'll, there'll be a time that uh, Israel will be completely isolated by all other nations. So that also it will, will be happening. So uh, God, but at the end, we can understand 
the great kindness, mercy of the Lord. The psalmist says that he, he is having mercy upon us because he knew that we are just mere carnal people. We are just mere, uh, I can say, men, men, men created out of dust. So that's why he's extending his mercies and grace. The same thing even Peter writes in his epistles that uh, like many people think that he's not delaying, but uh, he is actually extending his mercy, extending his grace. We can understand that. May God bless this word and may God bless this uh, 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 fruitful in our hearts. And uh, as we are meditating uh, one chapter or another, uh, may God reveal his ways to us. We thank God and we thank you for this time. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord.